So you want a leverless controller that's inexpensive, but you don't want that cheap plasticky look. Well, check out these HitPad standards from DOIO by Key Monkey. The HitPad standard series manages to keep the price super low at just $110 and $130 respectively, but you get two different options, one with a wrist rest and one without. But even while keeping the price point low, these HitPad standards offer an impressive amount of attention to detail, offering nice color options that you just often don't see from other makers. But the devil's in the details, and are these controllers actually good enough to work in fighting games when you're in in the heat of battle. Let's jump into some gameplay and find out. Just wanted to point out that these controllers were sent to me for the purposes of making this video. I don't have to say anything specific about the controllers themselves. I don't have to send them back at the end and all opinions are my own. All right, as you can see, I've got Street Fighter booted up and I've got my hit pad standard without wrist rest and my second one here with wrist rest here on the desk. Just want to point out that I have a separate video going over the basics of all of these cheap leverless controllers and there's plenty of detail in there, so do check it out. But for the specifics of these two controllers, we're going to be talking about that today. More or less, they are the same controller. We've got left and right movement and down and jump movement. This is one of those controllers that has every button you could possibly want in every position, including an up button here as well. Now by standard, they come with a jump button at the top and jump button here at the same time. So if you want to use it in a tournament, you'll have to go into the web configurator and disable one of them by yourself. It doesn't come with a way of disabling it without using the web configurator. But obviously having that flexibility means if you prefer to use your left thumb to jump, you can. If you want to use your middle finger to jump like Wazid controls, you can. And if you want to use your right thumb to jump as well, you can. So you have pretty much every option you could ask for. For the action buttons, you've got the standard light punch, medium punch, heavy punch, and light kick, medium kick, heavy kick. You've also got your L1 and L2 buttons if you want to set macros over there. And because this is one of those controllers with extra buttons, you can see we've got three. We've got one here on the left. This is set to the left stick. You've got one over here, which is set to the right stick, which I've got set for parry, so I can do quick drive rushes, drive impact over here. And what's really strange about the default setting for the hit pad standard is that this button up here is actually just a double of the left stick. I was incorrect, there's actually three. So I have L3 here, I have L3 here, and I also have L3 on the control panel. So. If you are going to be using this in a tournament, make sure that you go into the web configurator and deactivate some of these L3 buttons. Now, in terms of performance, there's everything to like about the controller. It's got all the buttons that you could possibly want. It's got Gacheron switches in here that you can hot swap with other switches that you want. You don't have to open the controller to access the switches. You can actually just pry these buttons off like so. They're in really tight, which is a good thing because sometimes custom button caps can come flying off by accident, but these ones are in nice and securely. And as you can see, we've got those Gateron switches in here. They are hot swappable, but one thing I will say is that I wasn't 100% sure how to use this tool. I couldn't find anywhere to actually clip onto the side of the switch. So maybe this is useful on a keyboard, but when they're dug into this key, controller here, my only way to get them out was to just jab something sharp into the side and just wrench it out. The keycaps themselves are surprisingly comfortable to use. Um, they're unusually flat for buttons. Sometimes buttons have more of a convex or a concave shape, but these are like completely flat. They feel a lot like the Paradise Arcade M-Press buttons, which work also quite flat. They're nice and close together, but there's not much gap in between, and even less so because they are flat like this. So unlike a lot of other controllers I've tested, I did find that when I was using it, if I were to double tap buttons like this, I would bump especially into this one. I mean, obviously <laughs> on the top row of these buttons, you'll bump into all the ones below it. But then on this row, really this button here, when you're trying to double tap, you'll bump into the R3 button here. If you don't double tap your buttons, then you might not notice any issues. Especially if you're coming from keyboard, you might not be used to double tapping anything anyway. Because of the sound, you can hear they're quite clacky buttons. And so as a result, I thought they would be kind of clunky to use, but they're not clunky at all. They're super nice and fast to press and super speedy. They're the sort of buttons that you could get kind of addicted to. I don't know if they're like better performance or anything, but they definitely feel quite nice to press. This is again one of those controllers that you probably don't want to be using late at night, especially if you're living with roommates or you've got people around in other close by rooms. Well, one super important feature that you won't find on the other controller, which I'll show you in a moment, is this part here, the wrist rest. Now this version costs about $20 more than the other one, but obviously if you like to have your hands resting at 
the same height as your fingers on here. Maybe you don't like having a lower surface for your desk and then having your fingers on a higher surface for the controller. The important thing you need to know about this version is that this is part of the controller. There's no way to actually like remove the wrist rest and turn it into just the standard controller. That means if you're like me and you like to have your controller right up against your body, you won't be able to do that with this controller. But something that is super cool because of this wrist rest is that it looks nice on your desk. If you take a look at these LEDs on the base, you can see that when I put it back on my desk, they rebound off and into the sides of the acrylic. You get a bit of, I don't know if you would, if you would call this total internal reflection, but as you can see, it does travel all the way to the edge of the acrylic and they've actually built some ridges into the base here so that the light gets distributed very, very faintly along the surface of this wrist rest here. You can change the colors as well. If you press start and select at the same time and you press these buttons here, you can go through the different versions where the lights are shining and moving. But what's really strange is that even though you, see, even though you can see all these cool lights on the base doing these cool patterns, because again, all the heavy lifting is being done by the GP2040 firmware. As you can see, for this controller, it doesn't really make much difference because you can't really see the lights. You can ever so slightly see the lights over, like between the edges of the button and the surrounds. But really, you can't see the lights through here. So I'm going through some of these animated patterns, but you can't really see it from the top when actually on the base, you could see it's got all these rainbow colored patterns. It's got actual individual LEDs for each key switch, but you, you really can't see them anywhere. I suppose if they sold a version with transparent keycaps, that would make sense, but I don't actually see that option. So I'm not 100% not sure why they went to the trouble of putting LEDs under each single one. But just so you can see, that's where the LED is. Now, this is probably a good time to show you the standard version without the wrist rest because although this is more or less the same controller, there are a few different changes that you may not notice until you've actually got one in your hands. Now this, as you can see, is identical in every way except for the wrist rest. And the thing that's important about this is that now you can have it rested right up against your body. If you want to, you could put a wrist rest just from, I don't know, from your gaming keyboard. You could just put it in front of this. It's super, super thin anyway. So really just resting your palms on your legs is not going to be a big issue. You still have this full on lighting system, which illuminates the base of the controller and makes your desk and the surrounding area around your desk look really cool. But of course, if you press start and select and you trust these buttons, you can switch to the other color mode so it phases through the other colors or if I do it one more time you can see it has all the animations that go through for the individual buttons but at the same time just like the version with the wrist rest you can't see any of those colors anyway it's incredibly subtle like you might see it if you look just you know at this very specific angle now having the same layout as the other version is obviously going to feel very similar to the other controller that doesn't feel like the buttons are heavier or louder or clackier or anything it really feels very very similar if we're comparing them directly i'd say that the pitch of these buttons is higher Something that both controllers have, which is quite cool, is that they've been set to use this arcade stick animation instead of the regular leverless animation. So left and right at the same time, and zoom up in neutral in the middle and pressing down and jump at the same time and zoom up with neutral in the middle. Just understand that these main direction buttons and these main action buttons are shown, but these extra three buttons here, they don't show up anywhere on the screen. While we're talking about the screen, I would like to point out that this is a really nice OLED screen. It's got a blue color to it, which is kind of uncommon, and that just adds to making it a little bit more unique compared to all the other white OLED screens that are out there. It's nice and crisp and you can see it super clearly. Like other controllers using GP2040, you also have access to multiple SOCD modes. Press start and home at the same time and I press up. Pressing down and up at the same time gives priority to up. But if I press home, start and down at the same time, then when I press down and up at the same time, you can see that it cancels them out and I end up in neutral. I can also press home, start and left at the same time and that will put me in last input priority mode. So even though I'm holding down left, when I press right, I'll end up moving right. So functionally, there's really very little to complain about. But one thing I will say is that it doesn't really come through maybe in the video just looking at the footage of it, but it's quite a nice controller. At only $109, it feels quite a lot more premium than a lot of the other controllers that are out there. This acrylic that they use feels nice and weighty, diffuses the light really smoothly. Having those lights come out the side of the controller is a really nice touch. It gives it that 
premium controller look. But also, having this two-tone design is really nice. I haven't seen a lot of designs like this before. They have a nice selection of colors on their website as well. Like, simple things like that, just having a good selection of actual choices and not just like the bright pink and the bright purple. Like, having this muted set of colors that they've got available, it's really nice. But in addition to that, it just functions really well. It's got everything you could possibly ask for in terms of buttons and the layout works perfectly fine. It's a nice and slim controller, so even without the wrist rest, I have no issue resting my palms on the desk if I feel like playing that way. I guess when it comes to functionality, the only thing that annoys me is that the shape of these button caps means that I do bump into the other buttons here. But on that topic, I should mention that while I was reviewing this controller, the company Keeb Monkey or DOIO, they actually sent me new versions of these controllers called the V2. So I'll be reviewing those in the future and those ones have slightly different button caps. Something else that you might not notice unless you have a really close look is that they're not smooth buttons. They've actually got a texture, but it's such a subtle texture that you can still glide your finger over it. Something cool I didn't know about these GP2040 controllers until recently is that you can actually plug into either of these USB-C ports and this is probably quite important because if you're thinking of aesthetics like is the lighting going to be cool on my desk at my gaming setup then it might really matter to you where the cable comes out because you want the cable to be hidden away somewhere and while we're talking about ports I should point out that there's no USB port in the middle we just have one here on the left on the top on the left side of the controller here at the top and we also have a USB A port presumably this is USB A because it's easier to plug in a dongle for things like the boots device which can get you past the authentication system system on PS5. Again, details about how this controller can be used on console and whether it can be used at all, that's in my separate video. I don't know what it is about these key switches, but they are very satisfying to press. Maybe it's a combination of like the sound, like if you don't live with roommates nearby, it's actually quite nice to have a controller that sounds good and satisfying to press. I guess, I guess that's how people choose a lot of their gaming mechanical keyboards. They've gone for this very nice, I don't know if there's like a universal standard for this, but there's like a really nice rounded edge here. I think it's called the corner radius. It's been chosen very specifically to be a nice gentle curve. It doesn't feel sharp at all. It's a nice rigid material but for some somehow because of the way they've beveled these edges it just feels really nice. It just doesn't feel cheap in any way which is weird because at $109 this is a bargain of a controller. And while we're speaking about the design something I do like is when they separate these options buttons into clusters. So instead of having six buttons in a row which means that basically four out of six buttons you don't really know which one you're pressing unless you look down. First of all they are labeled which is fantastic but secondly they're clustered into three groups of two. So it's like if I, even if I'm not looking at the controller if I just reach down and feel here I know that cluster number two the button here on the right is the select button I know that I'm resetting the stage like this. So most things feel pretty positive about these controllers but there are a few things I think we should draw some attention to. First of all you can see here on the controller it says turbo and I'm pretty sure the way that you use it is you hold down the turbo button and the button you want to become turbo and then that button should just constantly constantly press but as you can see nothing happens. Even on the version with the wrist rest if I hold down the turbo button and then I press a button you would expect him to be turbo rapidly kicking but nothing is happening. Generally speaking these buttons are in nice and tight it's actually quite difficult to remove a button once it's in there but you do need to be careful when you put them back because you may think that it's in there nice and secure it may feel nice and secure but if you don't put it in all the way they can actually pop out so make sure that when you reinstall the button caps that you push them all the way down. I also think design wise it is a shame that this wrist rest is not removable I don't really know why maybe that would increase the price of the control but this is nitpicking. The fact that there's two options when you purchase it is actually great. There are a lot of companies that just have the wrist rest built in and there's no way to remove it because there's just that's the design of the controller. They have these teeny tiny non-slip pads covering the nails in the four corners of the product. Like they kind of prevent it from slipping around but not really. I do think it's kind of a shame that we don't really get to see a whole lot of light show even though it has got that many LEDs. Like look at the base of this controller. Actually what's really strange is that when you press the jump button it's not actually a illuminating the button for the jump button. It's illuminating four buttons like this. I don't really know how they've decided it, but it's quite nice and it's obviously aimed less at having each individual light show up 
here and more about just having a cool light show that's aimed down at the desk. Still, I think a translucent keycap option when you purchase it would be nice. And on the topic of purchasing this product, I've actually been asked specifically to say in the video that they've got a website called Keeb Monkey where you can actually purchase these controllers. I haven't really looked up whether you can buy them on other websites, but it says on their website that that website is the only legitimate place to buy these DOIO controllers. Not a lot of flexibility there. To summarize my thoughts on the HitPad standard and the standard with the wrist rest, I have to say this is a very satisfying controller to use and it's got a lot of fit and finish that you wouldn't expect for a product being sold for only $110. Now I don't know what the cost of postage will be but since it says that it's only available from the Keeb Monkey website, I guess you're kind of stuck with only buying it from them directly and it does say that it will take more than two weeks to arrive before you get the product. At this price, you're getting a controller which is ultra small, ultra lightweight but also long enough that it doesn't fall off your lap. Well that's pretty much it for the DOIO HitPad standard series from Keeb Monkey. Honestly, I think it's quite impressive the amount of attention that they've put into the actual design and just choosing nice colors for these controllers. A few areas where it obviously still needs some work, but keep in mind that I have some video reviews coming up for the V2 versions of the controllers, which are only ever so slightly more expensive, but do have some small improvements over these controllers. So. Look forward to those reviews in the future. Until then, like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and check out this video next if you love controllers, fighting games, and all that great stuff. I've been Nihongo Gamer. I'll see you real, real soon.